mathematical understanding. Mathematical understanding depends upon consciousness. But mathematical understanding is not something of a purely computational character. There is something else which has to come into that. So that's, the mathematics only comes in to demonstrate that there is some part of our conscious thinking which you cannot simulate on a computer. Well then, what's the something else that might come into play? Well, if you believe, as I do, that whatever controls our actions and our, our brains and so on is, is the physics of the world, then that tells you there has to be something in the physics of the world which is not controlled computationally. doesn't mean it's not mathematical, but it's not computational. And the distinction between those is important. We have to look for something which is a basic gap in our present-day understanding. Roger believes he might find the answers in the world of atomic physics, quantum mechanics. Well, in quantum mechanics, for example, objects can be in two places at once. I mean, you can have an electron here and here at the same time. It has a wave function which is peaked at two places, the way you say it. But basically, it's in two places at once. But then when you make a measurement to see where it is, you find it's either here or here. And what's actually going on in that measurement process? There is something at some stage which doesn't follow the rules what you need is this sort of large-scale um, activity, quantum activity, in the brain, and then every now and again it does what's called the state reduces. You see, this is what happens when the electron, you see, it seems to be in two places at once, but then when you look at it, if you like, it becomes one or the other, and that's called the reduction of the state. And it's when that happens that you, a conscious moment, if you like, takes place in this, this idea. A lot of people have tr trouble believing <laughs> it. You know, it's, it's not, you know, no, who knows? <laughs> it's real science in the sense that all these things I'm saying you could test experimentally. At Imperial College in London, they're trying to get a better understanding of how our brains work by modeling the visual part of our consciousness on computers. I met Igor Alexander. Igor, you're trying to create artificial consciousness. Where do you begin? Well, you begin with the brain. But the brain is a very difficult uh, subject to do, to do experiments on. So if we move what we know about the brain into a computer, we can become sort of computational brain surgeons. And we can do experiments on what is thought to be the way that the brain works and, and test those ideas. And that's why I use computers. And how does that work? Well, how does it okay. manifest itself? Um, if we take a look at this. In this demonstration we have a virtual world which is just a simple white background with colored objects in it. But this frame represents an eye with the accurate bit, the fovea in the middle, accurate part of the eye, and the inaccurate area which is the perifovia around the edges. The job of the brain is to reconstruct this into a coherent consciousness and if we've understood things correctly, in this area we should get an accurate reconstruction of the center of that picture, which, as you can see, we're, we're doing. So this thing is actually perceiving that picture. But at the same time, it has a memory of it in another part of its brain, which it's able to label, and this is just called scene one, and it labels it one. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change what it's looking at. Um, and I'll get it to look at that now uh, and see whether it, it, how, how this picture comes into its consciousness and how it then remembers it over here and then tries to name it. Yeah, there it is. Everything is gelling now. It's memory, it's uh, perception of Moy, which is becoming clearer as it's looking at Moy. So this, it's between these two areas that its consciousness is actually happening because consciousness doesn't consist just of perception but it consists of what you remember about the world as well. And it's also got a link to a linguistic area where it's recognizing this picture as Moy. And um, well, there it is. In a very, very simple way it tells us that the theories that we have about how the brain gets its eye movement together with its visual consciousness may actually be right. So, does all this work mean that an artificial consciousness machine can be created? 
I asked Rita Carter for her opinion. Yeah, I think artificial consciousness is possible, but whether it will be a consciousness that you or I would recognise, even if we could for a moment share it, I don't know. Because the thing about consciousness, the thing about the human brain, is that it is fueled by the whole body. There is no point where the brain ends and the body begins. Your brain extends right down to your fingertips. And you, it's all part of the same system. So what emerges at the end of this, this thing called consciousness, is the culmination of everything that is happening in your body. The neurotransmitters, the hormones, the, the memories, the thoughts, everything, the sensory information coming in, all of that. And that is what emerges as consciousness, individual consciousness, and what gives it the quality, the individuality of your consciousness or my consciousness. Now, if you produce by creating a similar sort of complexity, consciousness in an artificial organ, like a computer or whatever, which I think is possible, it is nevertheless not getting the same uh, fuel from the environment as you and I are getting. It doesn't have its body to inform it the whole time. And I, it is certainly beyond my conception. I think probably it's beyond everybody's conception to imagine what that could possibly be like. But because we can't imagine it doesn't mean to say it isn't there. So that's consciousness. This is what I think I've discovered. Theories on consciousness are still being constructed. It's all very complicated. A lot of work is being done from a lot of different angles, with many differing views. So it looks like an artificially conscious machine is a long way off. I'm not saying that the computer becomes conscious like me. I'm saying that computer tells me what my consciousness is all about. I love music. If I say to the computer, do you like kippers? It'll say, don't be stupid, don't you know I'm a computer? I have nothing to do with <laughs> kippers. That, that's, that's a really conscious computer. <laughs>